Battery life is the eternal struggle. How does one get the most battery life out of their system? By itself, the Steam Deck is already pretty darn efficient. But with some extra tweaks here and there, you can make the Steam Deck run a lot longer. Welcome back to the Steam Deck Masterclass, Volume 16. You know, I talked about this a little bit in the very first episode, that being power management and battery life. I mostly talked about the option just being there in case you ever wanted to tinker with it, but I don't think I've ever given you a true guide on how to save battery life on your Steam Deck, so that's why we're here. You should see a notable improvement in battery life for both the Steam Deck LCD and the Steam Deck OLED, but it's very likely that you'll see a greater impact on the Steam Deck OLED compared to the LCD. I mean, the Steam Deck OLED has more efficient hardware, and an OLED display, and just a bigger battery. But you should see some pretty monumental gains. So first and foremost, you have to realize that the Steam Deck by itself is pretty efficient, but sometimes games will just suck up more power than they actually need to run well. There's no way of knowing if a game actually does this or not, because there's no great database. The only way to know for certain is to, well, do it yourself. So let's talk about the basics. The quick access menu has a number of different features to explore. We'll go over all of them. But before that, if you like this video or any other video I make, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech lowlife lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. And on top of that, I'll be running a giveaway for one of these. This is an RVTech NJ300. If you're a Steam Deck owner looking to record your gameplay footage, then this is a pretty good option to start with. This is actually how I started my channel. But this is a special version based on hit indie game, Little Witch No Beta. Don't be fooled by its cute and funny exterior. It is quite difficult as a Souls-like. You can find more information about this giveaway on my Twitter page. In the quick access menu in the performance tab, you have the performance overlay. This performance overlay gives you information about how your Steam Deck is performing. It gives you important information like your CPU and GPU utilization, how much memory is being used, your frame rate, your frame times, as well as your battery life and estimated battery time. Now granted, the performance overlay takes up a decent chunk of your screen real estate, so if you actually want to play a game, then do yourself a favor and turn off Steam performance overlay. The overlay comes in a multitude of different styles, with one being just the frame rate and four being a full bevy of system diagnostics. The next setting is use per game profile. You would enable this while in-game, and you can change the settings to apply to that game only. Otherwise, all of your settings would just apply to the entire system, which isn't preferable. And yes, this also works with non-Steam games as well. The frame limit slider changes both the frame rate and the refresh rate of your device. If you have an original Steam Deck LCD, you can go from 20 FPS to 60 FPS and anywhere in between. And if you have a Steam Deck OLED, you can go from 10 FPS to 90 FPS. In both the LCD and the Steam Deck, this will automatically change the refresh rate to suit whatever frame limit you have. So for example, if you chose 40 FPS on the Steam Deck OLED, it'll change the refresh rate to 80 Hz on the OLED. Adding a frame limit and changing the refresh rate can increase battery life. Like for example, if you play a game that never goes above 60 FPS, then it doesn't really make much sense to keep the refresh rate at 90 Hz, you know? And if a game only runs at like slightly higher than 30 FPS, then you can frame limit to 30 FPS, and you can save a little bit of battery doing this. Disabled frame limit is exactly what it sounds like. It disables the frame rate limit that your Steam Deck automatically has on, allowing your frame rate to go above what your display can actually show. As Valve says, you can use this to minimize frame latency for some games, but of course it can use quite a bit of power. Allow tearing essentially allows a game to render at a different refresh rate than the display. Allowing tearing can reduce latency, but it can introduce screen tearing, which I hate with a passion. This is the equivalent of disabling vSync, but through the entire system. Half rate shading is a garbage option. Never turn this on. Half rate shading is supposed to save battery by reducing the quality of, well, shading in game. The big issue though is that it makes your game look worse and it can garble up text making it straight up unreadable and not to mention, in my opinion, it doesn't really save that much power to begin with. So do yourself a favor and never touch the half rate shader setting. Keep it off at all times. You'll thank me later for this. The real meat and bones here is the TDP limit and the manual GPU clock. We'll have to go into game to demonstrate. The TDP limit options limits how much power your CPU gets. But do keep in mind that this is not total system power, this is just your CPU. There's a lot of components on your Steam Deck that still requires a lot of power, such as your display. This is useful for games that don't need a lot of CPU computation. And right below it is manual GPU clock. 
You can manually choose what clock speed your GPU runs at. Generally speaking, the faster the clock speed, the more graphics performance you get, and not to mention the more power you use as well. There is a weird quirk where it'll seem to jump back and forth, but what it's actually doing is taking its time to move the clock speed properly. It has a ramp up and ramp down slowly over time. So here, let me demonstrate for you. So as you can see here, when I change it to 300, it takes a little bit to ramp up and then it does the same for 400, 500, 600, 700. You get the idea, right? So it just takes a little bit to ramp up. In most cases, tweaking for battery life is a combination of a frame rate limit, TDP limits, manual clock speed limits, and also playing with the in-game graphical detail settings. When it comes to tweaking these numbers, there is no one perfect setting. But there are some great resources that tell you what numbers you could be running on your Steam Deck. Like for example, you have this website and friend of the channel known as Steam Deck HQ. In addition to reviewing the game and its suitability for Steam Deck, they also give you recommended power settings and graphical detail settings. And I will admit, their graphical detail settings have been generally pretty good. You don't have to follow their settings verbatim, you can choose to increase power or even graphical detail if needed, but this is a good starting point. Modding games to run better and use less power is also an option as well. And yes, these mods do exist for various games, but Honestly, I'm not going to cover them because it's kind of out of the scope of this video. Changing the refresh rate slash frame limit, as well as changing the TDP and GPU clock speeds are all safe on the Steam Deck. These are fairly safe tweaks that you can do, and if you do go too far in one direction, you can always just revert it. And most importantly, all of these settings are settings that all Steam Decks have access to. But you may be asking yourself, what about undervolting? Isn't that supposed to improve battery life by a lot? And the answer is yes it can, but your mileage may vary. There's a lot of different factors in play and not everyone can undervolt effectively. If you want a more detailed video about undervolting and my experiences with undervolting my Steam Deck OLED, then check out this undervolting video that I recently released. It was an illuminating experience making that video, and that video was supposed to be a part of this video, that is until I came across certain revelations. Certain revelations in regards to undervolting the OLED model, and as such that was made into a separate video earlier. So why don't you check it out there? If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.